All right, I've got a few minutes in between classes, and I wanted to talk about the turning section for the night. You can see I've got it up on my screen. This is what I talked about in class. Just the turning section is all that I'm looking for today. So you should have something like this. I don't necessarily need you to have the machining applied to it, but um, I'm just looking for something this shape. So I'm going to start over with it and um, just walk all the way through it and that way we make sure that we're talking about the same thing as we go. So I'm going to create a new sketch and um, put it here in the front, connect it there, and I've got my drawing in front of me of the Titans um, Knight. And so I've got a habit of working in a certain way so I'm just gonna follow through with that so 3.5 long is about how long I want this part to be when I'm done and so I'm just gonna kind of follow along with my normal pattern you can veer from this some I just want to make sure that you get uh, some of the same things that I was talking about in class so uh, the bottom the bottom side of this thing is the same all the way through so we've got 743 I'm gonna rotate and flip it on its side this way so I've got my part here uh, the other end of it's also going to be that size um, so I'm going to come up and I'm going to draw a line and it's going to be um, about 600 so about there and then I'm going to come down with an angle that brings me somewhere around here and I'm gonna stop there and start to squeeze in some of these dimensions. So hopefully I don't have constraint issues for moving things around, but if I do, I will adjust it as I need to. So this line needs to be uh, 595. Um, let's see, this next line gives me a length and then a radius of what it should be down here at the bottom so from here center point here to this line needs to be 300 so i'm going to make it 300 and it needs to be to the end point to the back of the part 1.246 okay so there is my angle that I've got across here. Now if I move over and kind of pay attention to some of the other parts of the night, um, I can see that I'm going to need a small uh, land that runs across here that's about 84 thousandths long. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it in there now. Put it in there and I'll go 84. And uh, before I move on too far, I'm going to pan over just a little bit. I'll put my little V-groove in here. I want you to do a quick modification to the V-groove just so it'll be a little bit smoother for us. It looks something like that. Apply some dimensions to it here to here. And it's going to be 084. And then the next dimension from the bottom is here and it is going to be 0.182 that takes care of both sides of that and then to the center point of it I've got oh let's squeeze you back straight here we go um, looks like 133 check diameter on that one as well and that one's going to be 694.694 um, um, let's go back on that one and I'm going to come back I'm going to delete this I'm going to grab a dimension here and that is hopefully going to constrain that um, that dimension has moved on me. It needs to be 0.743. Pull that up. And 
And while I'm here, let me go ahead and just trim out this middle section here. And then from here, here to here, 694. Now I'm in good shape. Okay, so now all my dimensions come out right. I'm going to pan and zoom a little bit just to bring this thing into clarity a little bit more. Um, I'm going to put a fillet in this corner to this corner. Mm, stand by. Must have had something still going. So there we go. And let's now put... The print actually says 18 or 16. I'm going to go 20 in the bottom there. And then up here on these upper edges, here to here, I'm going to go 15. And then here to here, I think I'll go 15 as well, just to soften those edges as it goes through there. Just kind of keep that edge from getting burnt up. I'm going to come over here and go ahead and put my radius in here. This is supposed to be 250. That's according to the print here to here. Uh, 0.25 takes care of my radius there. And at this point, I'm going to do a save. And I'm going to call this the Titan Knight. turning section on this. All right, so far so good. I like the bottom of it. Um, as we've done on the other ones, we extend out the back a half of an inch. I'll do that later. And so I'm gonna bring this over and I need to go ahead and there's this angle that's at the bottom of the, of the night. I do this angle slightly differently than they do it in uh, the Titan demo. There's a million different ways to do things, so don't feel like you need to be locked into doing it one certain way. Um, I just know what really works good for me and what works good for most of our students. So um, that's why I kind of like doing it like this. I'm gonna go ahead and bring a line up here just because I'm about to end this thing. I'm almost done. And I'll go ahead and connect to a diameter here run this thing over at 90 degrees so that it intersects and then trim out this and this and this this section here needs some needs a little bit of a radius it needs a 70 thousandths radius I believe yeah so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a circle in here just out in space and it's going to be 140 for the diameter then going to move it and constrain it to this wall and constrain it to this wall. Move that down in there, trim that out. And I think I'm ready to do a revolve on it. Okay. So I've got that. If I want to, I can put a little bit of a radius here. Just I want to just stop myself from having to do any kind of deburring. So maybe Let's go 80, just to break the edge. Okay, um, that looks pretty decent. Um, three and a half inches long, I believe. Yeah. Uh, or our overall part length is gonna be three inches, four, 15 when it gets done. We've got some extra stuff we've gotta do to ours. So while I'm still in the sketch, I'm gonna go ahead and go over here to revolve and I am going to shift slightly. That's my axis, that's my profile, and I am happy with that. That's what, I, that's what my part looks like right now. I'm gonna add an additional half inch onto the back side of it. And that's just gonna be protruding out the back by a half of an inch. Okay. Join it to it, go back to my view and fit it in. Um, make sure I know what buttons I'm pushing. 
So this is what I'm really looking for at this point. When you come to class, um, that's, that's what we should have. Something that looks pretty similar to this. Um, we will need to think about the direction that we turn it. Um, I would say with our profiling tool, the way that we want to turn it is probably this direction. Uh, with our turning tool, this will be our Z0 on this side. Turn it, we'll groove it, uh, we'll come down here and do our profiling with it. Um, I guess, so I've got about 12 minutes, 10 minutes in turning this. I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick save. Let's play around just a little bit with some of the turning on it. I will want to do a face on this, face cut. Um, let's see. Go in and select a machine. I've got... TL1 with the four post, four post tool changer. If you want that post from me, let me know and then I can give that to you. I gave it to somebody today. So we got that lathe. I don't love how this thing's sitting in there. Um, I want to bring it closer up to the front. So, and I also want to change my length of material. It needs to be probably five inches. And I want it to be from the front. And I might give my, eh, I probably should leave that as to no offset. That's actually giving us just a little bit of problem. Um, it's going to be program 300. And we'll use offset 1 for G54. And that should take care of our setup. So at this point, we've got a decent looking part sticking inside of there. No chuck drawn, but that's okay. We can, we can figure out what we got going on. We will do a face cut. Grab a tool from our Fusion library. We should actually, let's go back over here. This is what we've been using, the BNMT431. So it is a, let's just look at it. Same turning tool that we've been using. This is our insert style profile. Our holder, um, tangent on the tip, post-processing, these compensation offset and number both had to be the same number on there. Or at least for us today, both need to be the same number. Okay, and we'll select that tool. That takes care of our face off there. That's at 12 thousandths feed rate. Surface speed, we'll move it up to a thousand. I need to make some adjustments in the tool itself. And I'm gonna max the spindle at 1200. I don't want to go really fast. The bottom, I'm okay with that finish being um, a little rougher. That shouldn't be a problem. I don't think I should have to do anything else anywhere else. Um, let's take this down to um, stock OD, and we'll give ourselves 100 thousandths over the stock OD. It's more than enough. More than enough. Uh, I probably move this tolerance out just. To has really nothing to do with what we're doing, but it just I just kind of have a, a preference. Um, okay, let's go back up here, and that was not supposed to be ten. Just did it again. It needs to be one hundred. All right, so now I have my turning or my facing, and I'm happy with that. I'll go ahead and hit save. So I don't lose anything or have any problems. We did just do updates today. So now I should be in a spot where I can go ahead and turn this thing. And then do the part off. You need a couple of nights. But what I would suggest doing is making um, a couple and then having... Um, have, you, you need one for the assignment, um, two for a set, and then I would make sure that I had one for a setup. Okay, so we just go into our turning. Same tool. Um, I'm a 1200. I don't want to max. I want to keep my spindle from just going nuts. Um, let's go ahead and make this 0.1. Um, we're working with the 
finish nap material, so that's more than enough. So I tell myself all the time I'm going to go in and set some of these presets so that um, I don't need to always be making adjustments, um, but I sometimes do, sometimes don't. All right. Um, everything else looks pretty good. So, let's see how I'm moving in and out looks pretty good. I'm staying about 80 thousandths away. I can move that down to 50. It's not going to make much difference in the part that we're working on. It's so small. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so we've got, we faced it off. We're gonna do a turning pass all the way across there. Then we're gonna um, rough this section out and then we'll bring it down and finish pass. Let's do a quick simulation, see what it looks like at this point. That looks like it. So if you wanted to, so let's just go back and, and do this. Just just for the ability to have this, I can I can leave some extra in s for stock, so 10 thousandths uh, radial and zero axial, um, really because of the way that the design is, my radius is the only thing that really matters, uh, my, or my diameter is really the only thing that matters. So leave some stock there, and then what I'll do is I can just duplicate this, or I could come in and do a finish pass, same tool. Um, same surface speed, go down to 1,206 on my feed. Um, actually, I think I just lead, lead, lead in and lead out alone. And do a quick profile finish, cut over it. Same, so I've end up with three tool two operations. Then, um, all I really need to do now is go in and part it off. And so this is honestly one of the simpler parts that we've done. The, the, the bishop that we did today was probably more difficult than what this is. So start to spindle at 500, that'll be fine. Um, that looks good. Go ahead and move this down to 100, uh, just because we don't need to do a ton of air cutting. And we'll peck it at um, That reduce star speeds and feeds. So reduce down. This will be radial. At, that'll be sorry. That'll be radial at two hundred thousandths. Um, reduce feed to 0 0.001 and reduce RPM to one twenty five. That sounds good. I like that. That's a that's a update. Um, recent update, and I'm really happy about that. Um, the only thing I missed, I think, was. Edge break. I'm going to go ahead and put a little chamfer on the back side. Let's go 50 on the back. And then I'm back here. That looks good. That looks good. And oh, better make sure. Better make sure I select my tool. I did not go forward, backward, left, or right like I always tell you to do. Grooving parting tool is tool number four. That's a 125 wide. I'll pull it up so you can see it. I think. So 125, got a 32 thousandths tool nose radius on the outside of it. I bet it really probably doesn't have that big of one, but that's what it is. Tool four, offset four, and we'll use that tool. And it should be straightforward for us. Come over, part it off. I'm going to do a save because I'm a habitual saver. And now move this thing around and let's just run through a quick simulation. Oh, let's run a quick simulation of the entire thing. Not just the part off.
can't save again because I haven't changed anything. Go up here to my post processor. I want to use Haas Turning. I want to make sure that I'm using the right thing. So um, this Haas Turning, pretty simple. Um, so I will make sure I use it. And my program number needs to be 300. And I can use G53 for my home on my axis. Uh, my maximum spindle speed at 1200. Optional stop. Um, I can separate words or not. Use can cycles only available if I want to. I don't have. Um, I can do radius arcs or, or not. In the cam, it's not going to make a ton of difference. I, I'm not threading. I don't need to use a tail stock. Any of those things are fine. Um, so I can hit OK. And I've got some kind of problem. I did not. I didn't attach any operations to it. It's going to be a problem. So when I'm over here, I went through everything. I did not tab over. I want to go ahead and do all those operations and hit OK. And then now I should have, I'm going to do a quick save. And if I want to see my program, um, actually, I'm going to do it like this. Go back into here. And I'll go to post. program here and it is 300 it is 2 and the only other tool that I'm using is 4 and it's way down at the bottom at my pecking so you can see I'm pecking at a faster speed and feed rate till I get to here and then I'm going to reduce down um, so I'm not not going as much now it doesn't look like I'm seeing 1200 for that I need to change that I'm not happy with that so I'm gonna go back into grooving parting and I definitely do not want this so I'm gonna go to like 300 and I'm gonna go to um, probably 300 for RPM that might be a little might be a little slow um, and then So three thousandths on my feed rate, max the spend our service speed at three hundred, max the spindle at three hundred. So pretty slow, but that's this this part is uh, three and a half four four inches long. Um, really don't want that thing slinging off at some type of insane RPM. So save again, and then you know, my operations. I can go in here and post this thing. All I'm really concerned about right now is the part off tool operation. 300. So the surface speed is at 300 and it's not going to go over 300 for the RPM. It's going to go down to 200 thousandths and then start pecking down until it gets down to the rest of it. Those are fairly, those are decent those are decent pecs, so um, it'll be all right on that. Uh, I probably would, could go a little bit shallower on the pec, but that's okay. I think that's a decent, it's a decent part for what we're going to be doing. Okay, that's my final save. I would, if it were me, I would go ahead and output this thing, um, do a file save as, put it on USB. That way I've got a program ready to run first thing in the morning. We are start to finish in less than 25 minutes. So even if it takes you twice this long, you're, at, you're less than an hour in this part. Um, so that should take care of at least the turning portion of the um, night. So, all right, um, see you, bye.